Hi, my name is Mark Kidwell and I'm the technical service engineer for 3M Masking. Um, here talking to you today about how to properly wrap a booth with dirt trap. Uh, a couple things you want to pay attention to is where to start, where to stop. Uh, the best place to start when you walk into a standard paint booth is immediately to your left as you enter the main doors. The reason for that is it gives you an opportunity to start and do a full wrap with the wall applicator and finish again at the doors rather than having your starts and stops in corners or middles of the wall where you might have to have cuts. Um, so here I would start, like I said, immediately here to the left as I walk into the booth. The only other place that I might start would be the very back corner of the booth. Um, here where you come in when you're getting ready to paint many times is another fine place to start because of the door. Gives you again an opportunity to wrap. You'll see when I wrap this booth, I typically wrap from the front door to here, and many times we'll make a break here before continuing around the rest of the booth. A couple things to note while we're in this area of the booth, by the way, are some of the obstacles you might have to face using dirt trap in a paint booth. For starters, you may have smaller obstacles that are easy to make small cuts in the dirt trap to move past, and we'll work on those. Another thing you might have are large things such as pressure regulators. When these aren't on the outside of the booth, a good way to get around them is often to wrap right up to them and then either not wrap around them or use pieces from the lights and windows to piecemeal in around them. Finally, before you get going with actually wrapping the booth, you're going to want to get rid of many of the removable items that are on the booth as possible so that you can actually step in and not have to go over as many of these obstacles. The one thing I do also want to draw attention to is all the way at the top we do have a small hole coming into the booth and this is common in many booths and my rule of thumb is if there's something in a booth that has a hole or has a, an exposure it's probably there for a reason. So whenever I come across something like that if I were to wrap over that I would make sure that I cut that hole free that way it can have enough room for air to move in and out of it if it needs it. The next thing we're going to talk about is setting up the dirt trap wall applicator to actually wrap the booth and performing that installation. I'm going to grab a little bit of the material and I'm going to thread it over the first roll and then I'm actually going to stick it behind the tab there. At that point I'm going to step around behind the wall applicator and I'm going to lower it down into the position of the first row I'd like to do, which will be about there. I'm going to go in and I'm going to touch it into the wall. At that point, I'm going to step all the way around the wall applicator. I'm going to take that piece off and I'm going to actually go ahead and tack it into the wall by hand. That gives me the opportunity to actually start walking the material out onto the wall and getting it started. Once I have it started, I move it, the second roller onto the wall and then begin just walking along the wall with the applicator. I don't want to do this too fast just because moving at a faster pace can actually put a stretch into the material. But as I walk along the wall, I'll make quick movements just in order to avoid obstacles. As I move along this wall, I'm going to continue at a moderate pace going into the corner. As I enter the corner, I'm going to keep in mind that I want to keep both rollers in contact with the wall and provide just a little pressure into the corner when I reach it. Again, keeping a nice moderate pace down this wall so that I don't put any stretch into the material. And this way I don't have too much work to do to smooth it down when I complete the total lap. I've got exactly one inch overlap here, so I'm going to move into the wall and adhere the first portion of this st strip. I'm going to move straight into the corner with the back roll still off the wall get a little pressure and then start moving up this wall and once I've got enough room I'm going to get that back roller moving along the wall. I'm going to just slowly move 
at a pretty moderate pace along the wall. Now you can do a lot of things when you get to these obstacles, but when I reach one like this corner where it's this large, I'm actually just going to go ahead and come behind it and cut myself loose so that I don't actually have to try to wrap right into it. In general, it's just so much more challenging to try to adjust yourself up to the obstacle than it is to cut it short, turn around, get more material going, and just start again after it. And I'm gonna come back in and I can fill that area in with pieces I cut loose from the windows when everything's all done. So again, I touch it to the wall, come around, and get this first strip fixed in where I want it so that I can start walking out the rest of this wall. Get that back roller onto the wall once I've got room and just start walking at the rest of the length of that wall. A little pressure in at the corner and making sure I keep both wall rollers in contact the whole time I go through the corner. I'm going to start up this next wall and just continue moving. And that's as easy as it is. I get here, I'll cut it loose and then continue on to the third wrap. I'm going to go ahead and press it here for this last bit of the row and get the amount I need attached to the wall behind it one last time. Step around and start to walk out the beginning of the product and as there's room again get that back roller moving. Keeping both rollers in contact I'm going to walk again moderate pace and a little pressure in the corner and just have it pivot through that corner. Keep walking down along the wall. And one last trick I'll show you as we reach into this corner is when I go to cut this, I'm going to cut it several inches short for the whole length of the material. And then I'm going to come behind with the wall roller applicator and push out that last distance. That way I don't have to come behind it with the spreader right away. I get a good flat line. All right, I'm gonna start by placing myself all the way at the end of this door and then actually overlap off the door so that I can get a good start. And then I'm gonna use just the front roller to roll the first bit. Once I get a little ways out, I'm going to get that last roller on there and when I get to an obstruction, I'm actually just going to lift the front roller and try to stay in contact with it the whole way. And I'll come back later and I'll cut that obstruction out with the scissors. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as a bump. And then I'll bump over it with the back roller as well. And I'm just going straight across these doors with this. So this is really minimizing the amount of work I have to do in the end. Depending on how much coverage you want here, I sometimes actually cut to the other side of this post and I'll just cut all the way down the whole thing and then I'll go ahead and come back and I'll cut out the area I don't want. Obviously there's a, an attachment at the very bottom of this for the, for the uh, pull the slide and then there's an attachment for that in the center. So I'm going to cut those both out. And this is, you know, really when you're trying to make it look the best it possibly can. Um, you want to make sure you really go that extra little bit and, you know, do the finishing touches. You're going to come in with the spreader and just tuck in behind. And then you can come back and just once it's through there, you can come back and roll that with your finger around the corner the rest of the way into the jam. And it just gives you a little more coverage around the actual uh, door. And then here you can just roll this with your hand the rest of the way into the jam. And that's going to give you a nice good edge on the door and the best coverage you're going to be able to get and actually get in behind the uh, locks on the door. So. In order to install a new roll of dirt trap onto the dirt trap floor applicator, 
First, I'm going to actually extend the floor applicator to the heightened position to allow room for the roll. After that, I'm going to position the roll on the bottom, then come around and align it so that it'll be ready to come down on the top. It's a quick push down should lock that into place. Reattach the back pole. And you're all set to go again. In order to start the dirt trap on the floor, first I'm going to place the applicator on the floor with the roller up and then the uh, roll on the back, the poles laying on the floor. I'm going to step on the back of the pole in order to make sure this doesn't move. And then I'm going to take the dirt trap and I'm going to place it almost directly under the roller's position. A step behind and lift up the floor roller and just start walking it out along the floor. When I get about two inches from where I want to stop, I'm going to roll it back over itself and set it down and come around and actually cut it out with the scissors. Now these are the uh, new titanium scissors we are recommending for a dirt trap, so they cut through it pretty nicely. When I get that last little bit, I'm just going to roll that last little bit out. I'm going to step behind it and roll it up just a hair so that I can reposition to the next spot. Again, placing the roller above where I care to start. Coming around, stepping on the back portion. Placing it down on the floor underneath the roller. Smoothing it out some. Coming back around. Walking out the distance that I want. And stopping again two inches from where I want to end. Coming around and with the scissors, cutting that remaining bit. Come around with the wall applicator and walk out that last little bit. So that's how I'm going to do the straight area. In order to install a large strip with the dirt trap floor applicator, I'm going to do the same kind of starting position. I'll step on the back, allowing myself enough material to come around and start the strip on the floor and wet it out on the floor. And I'll come around and I'll actually walk out the first couple feet before I flip it over, step behind it to walk out the rest of the length of the room. Again, you want to keep a pretty moderate pace as you do this, the same as with the wall applicator. And when you get to the end, stop about two inches short of where you want to be. Step around and cut that out and roll the rest out and you're all done.